is things are getting better. There, we have statistics that are showing that the crime is going down, that things are doing very well. The bad guys are saying, this is not a good place to play, right? So this is excellent. Now, let me tell you I'm excited. This, this movie star over here, <laughs> Lois Gibson is an American forensic artist um, who holds a 2017 and a whole bunch of other years Guinness Book of World Record for most identifications by a forensic artist. She also drew the first forensic sketch shown on America's Most Wanted, which helped identify the suspect and solve the case. Will you please welcome enthusiastically Lois Gibson? <laughs> and didn't get a call, but uh, I'm gonna make this really quick so you won't suffer too much. <laughs> what I do, uh, which was confusing when I approached the police department in 1982. Were you on board in 1982? Just barely coming off of Chicago. Oh, okay, <laughs> they did not, oh I taught you, oh you, you had my class? Yes. Oh thank yes. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> really good y'all, y'all. You better say it or I'll scare Jim. <laughs> Billboard. But <laughs> what's hard is nobody thinks I can do what I can do. Here's what I do for this smarty, the journalistic smarty people. I'm supposed to get in a room with somebody that's been through the worst thing in their life, and I gotta get them to remember the face of the person that did it. And the hope is that the portrait will be close enough that it'll help the investigator find the guy. Well, nobody thinks I can do this. My ex-husband, the redneck plumber from Waller, Texas, goes, you can't do it. HPD goes, we don't know what you're talking about. Some guy who was hitting this office early in the morning and later went to the big squad room in the sky, I won't say his name, he goes, come on down here when I call. We can put you in the jail and you can draw all the perverts you want. He, but anyway, it's from memory. Yeah, he did, bless his heart. <laughs> he thought I wanted to go draw guys in the jail. But it's from memory. <laughs> it's deadly serious. And if you get a homicide detective, they can't do much more than way less than 12 cases a year, but because it takes one hour or so for me to do a sketch, I've now worked 5,000 cases, 4,983. Well, I did that, I did count it before, because I get on the stand and I testify at homicide trials. And I have helped, well, I've got it down to science, and I even wrote a textbook on it. Don't do this at home, kids. Don't write it down. <laughs> Please don't. But anyway, I wrote a book, and I am in the Guinness Book of Records. My sketches have helped bring in more than 1,266 of some of the worst felons to walk the face of the earth. Okay? Yeah. Some of them, yeah. And some of those guys are good looking. But anyway, <laughs> they're young. All the crooks are young. They're smooth. Yeah. So I'm gonna skip, my, my beginning story is that someone tried to kill me for fun, that's why I do this. And I have this book, Faces of Evil, and there's some serious people working on doing a TV series about me and my work for ID channels, so if it takes off, they'll republish, but you might wanna get this on the internet because it's the original, but it talks about me almost being killed. And then I had a miracle after I was almost killed. It was in Los Angeles, I was a dancer on TV, I was a model. And I'll show you some of my modeling pictures you won't recognize <laughs> 100 years ago. But some guy tried to kill me for fun. It took 25 minutes. It was a torture killing, but I didn't die for all you biology experts. Still breathing. But what happened, <laughs> see, <laughs> sharp person, still alive. But uh, I tried to kill myself because it destroys you. And then I had a miracle, which the writer is so good. A real writer wrote this. I didn't write. A smart girl that writes, Deanie Francis Mills. She's so interesting. So she talked about my favorite miracle, which is I went up the street. I didn't mean to go up something, took the steering wheel, and I saw the guy that tried to kill me being arrested for another crime. And they were trying to get down the stairs, and he was cuffed. And it was some real tall stairs. And he started, even though his hands were cut behind his back, he started fighting with everything he had with his head and shoulders and, and legs. 
And in order to get down the stairs without all the guys breaking their arms and legs, they had to beat the boo out of them, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to watch it. <laughs> oh, I was, they were hurting him. I needed it. <laughs> I needed to see that. So after that, that made me do like two things. You can decide which one's weird. Two things, one of which is weird. Number one, I went, that, there's a God, because I didn't mean to turn up that street. Something took the steering wheel. If you're, you know I'm not lying. I mean, it just went, and I went, why am I going up this street? What the heck? Then I saw the guy get arrested. I saw justice in spite of myself, because it was a sexual assault. I couldn't report it. Like nine out of 12 girls, I couldn't report it. I couldn't talk to somebody. Are you, are you kidding me? It's the stupidest thing I ever heard. I want to talk about that. So I got justice in spite of myself. So I drove <laughs> away from the scene. <laughs> and I knew that was God. And then I knew I would never mind paying taxes after that. <laughs> but that's weird. I don't, let me pay. I'll pay. I paid extra and I took the account years ago. She goes, you wait, she that. called them and they gave <laughs> back money. So anyway, it's weird. Then I approached the police department. And I had to put the Disney version in here because they were terrible. The, the resistance to me, oh, after I was killed, I went to the river, I've got a degree in art. Because while he's killing me, I go, wow, I didn't really finish college. He's choking me to death. So I finished college, and it was like, wow, I never had my kids, so I had kids. But I finished college, got an art degree, went to the Riverwalk in San Antonio, and drew about 3,000 tourist portraits. Well, that's a lot of practice. That'd be like shooting your gun skeet shooting like eight hours a day for like two years. You get good. So I'm drawing portraits and then I moved to Houston and I heard the news and I went, oh no. I had to force myself on the police department. They were horrible because it didn't make sense. I mean, if I got a call from me, I would hang up too. But, <laughs> but the, the third case I did solved a crime and you can't, you can't argue with success, you know. And I want them over. I want them over a little bit at a time. But I still don't fit in. But now I'm so old <laughs> that, yeah, I'm 69. I love being, I work out every day at the gym so I can put up with the tension of the job. I don't want to stay, but you know, it works out. It makes you muscular. And uh, it makes you stand all that stress of people lying to you. I thought I was a virgin. I go to the building, I got lied to big time. And everybody in the building, it was like therapy. They go, they always, everybody lies to us. Join the club, right? So I was like, but they lied to me. Okay, these are paintings. I do paintings. <coughs> I do mayors. I'm on my third mayor of San Antonio. Anybody into mayors? I'll show you later. <laughs> there I mean. Oh, I did Bob Lanier. I got a picture of him. There's, uh, I'm sitting in an inner tube with a waterproof camera on Frio River. And the color on this projector's no good, but I'm gonna hit right <laughs> It's always been, it's really better, these paintings. But anyway, this, these are all sketches next to the proof of perpetrator the crime. So mm -hmm. here's something sacred I don't do. I'm very, I don't wanna say, I'm so truthful. Uh, I never change them after they pick the guy up and I see a photograph. I fantasize about, because I can give me 60 seconds, I can make them all look exactly like it. But the truth is, this is how bad or good, this is how off they are. Do you understand? I, I know artists that like, don't lie about this. Show how bad it is. And why am I doing that? I'm thinking about new people. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching young artists. I'm trying, they're flying around the world to teach other artists to do this. And they need, need to know how bad it can be, but it still catches the guy. You understand? Like, ooh, does this thing work? Oh yeah, this guy turned himself in and it's pitiful. He turned himself in, yes. Okay, so a baby's kidnapped. Now this is worse than none of these guys can even stand it. Y'all don't have enough to stand this. Forget murders. Baby kidnapping by a stranger tears everybody's guts out. All the strong men standing around with the mom looking, where's my baby? And this was the humble police officer's son. And so, I did a sketch, and this is early in my career, I hardly, I'd only done 100, and it got the baby back that night. And the woman that gave me the sketch screamed all her answers. So I have to suffer a lot of abuse with the witnesses. Okay, 1,200 sketches later, somebody kidnapped, played like they were a nurse, and they kidnapped a 10-hour-old baby. 
some Japanese show did a thing about you know ten months. I go no, ten week, no, ten day, no. Ten. Japanese people, you're num you're numerical, right? You're Asian. Ten hours old, and everybody the the, the trauma of the officers at the scene tore me up. Forget the mother, she was gone. She was on beds. She should have been. So I did this. Remember, this is 1,200 sketches after that first baby kidnapping. And it looks like she posed for it. And her friend called her, mm -hmm. you know, called in and got the baby back that night. Okay. And that pressure from that kind of case, <laughs> it'll tear your face off. But I'm good at pressure. <laughs> and these are children, child witnesses are better than, better than adults. And the officers don't get, they don't get what I do. They go, yeah, you can't do the sketch, they're 12 years old. Wrong coffee down a breath. I've done it. I've done, no, I've done it for four-year-olds. I'll show you the sketch from a four-year-old baby that saw his parents killed. This is from a nine this is from a nine-year-old. His five-year-old brother was kidnapped and raped all night. And so if you're an artist and you see that it's got hat and glasses, you go, hey, why don't I quit? I mean you get suicidal thoughts, you go, oh, I'm doing this job, it's terrible. But there's some girls in the jail and they saw the sketch and one girl was yeah, that guy with the hat and the glasses, he raped me too. He tied me to the bed. The woman goes, what's his name? Napper, how do you spell that? You know, because she's going to get commissary cash. So it got solved from the sketch from some girl seeing. That's not that good, but it got caught. Witness was nine. Ten-year-old girl gets assaulted. And I did this not good sketch pretty early in my career. This guy sees the sketch and turns himself in. <laughs> I mean, I, it's not that good. Do you understand? It somehow gets out to people in their mind. I don't know what, how it works. But I just am a vessel. So I had three five-year-old girls who saw a guy, and one of them was molested. This was the first time I'd done somebody that young. So I did this sketch, and all the little girls uh, there's a book that you have with faces, with eyes, lips, noses, chins, 200 each, each feature. The little girls separately, the other ones were playing with toys, picked the same eyes, the same eyebrows out of 200 examples, the same lips, and each of the little girls said, that's your nose, Miss Lady. I'm going, come on, little girls. And then the third little girl, I'm going, here, look at the noses, look, and she goes, Miss Lady, it's your nose. I'm going, okay. Nose of a pervert, right? <laughs> so I took my mirror and I stuck it on my easel and I drew my nose on this guy's. Uh, does he, doesn't he have a great looking nose? Come on. <laughs> he was caught, he was caught being drunk in public. They thought he looked like the sketch. But a bing, but a bing, they had a lineup. And li there's what my nose looked like. Guess what, babies? Your nose grows your whole life. Too bad. Don't blame me. It's cartilage. I'm sorry. You lose. <laughs> Four year old. They flew me to Kansas, Ulysses, Kansas. And all you officers, listen to how great this was, though. They got a four-year-old, and he sees both the parents slashed to death. No, that's not the great news. The great news is there was only 900 people in town, right? But still, all you got is a four-year-old who turned four that day, <coughs> covered in blood. So you call Aunt Lois, Ulysses, Kansas, kids entertainment capital of the world. <laughs> so I did this sketch, and the, if you have the facial identification catalog, the baby just has to understand who he's drawing, and he'll point at pictures, and you draw like this. And when I finished, I turned around, do it where they can't see. I turned it around, and the baby said, very angrily, why did you draw that man only in Spanish? On top of everything, he only spoke Spanish, and my Spanish is so bad. I'm like, taco, nacho, it's terrible. But anyway, he goes, why did you draw that man? And everybody started crying, because we realized it must look like him. They just went to the area, and everybody said, knock on that door. Everybody in the area, oh, just knock on that door. And so uh, they did, and this guy comes. And it's not perfect. Remember, I don't change him. Got him. It got him. You got to tell yourself this work is so brutal. If it catches the guy, you tell yourself that's perfect because right. it functioned. And you don't beat yourself up because I can beat myself up like sick. A guy's in charge of a road crew. He sees this man drive that way. He's known him since he was a kid. He goes, there comes Gene. Then he doesn't realize Gene gets shot to death by a burglar suspect. All he does know is about 15 minutes later, the car comes back at him, the patrol unit, 
and it's fishtailing off back and forth across the road, almost having a wreck every second. He goes, what's wrong with G? And he sees him drive by like that. And he goes, that's not Gene. So I get him, he's grouchy, it's 1130 at night, he has thick glasses, he's mean, he's abusive to me. I never saw him. So I have a trick, I go, I always go, well, what kind of hair do they have? Because everybody that says they don't remember, humans are obsessed with hair. That's why high school's so hard. <laughs> Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I go, well, what? He goes, I don't know. It's a skinny Mexican. And he goes, what kind of hair? He goes, I don't know. It goes up like that. So I was sure I did terrible. I waited nine months. I didn't have the sketch to change it. I gave it to them. And then nine months later, I said, OK, I'm going to take the hit. I want to see how bad I did. Give me the photograph. <laughs> and I teach this. And if you know somebody who can draw, this guy is so tough, he's sexy. Paul Deason. Any of you guys, you know Paul Deason? This man, he is a turn on, he's an Aries. <laughs> <laughs> he's on patrol, he stops a guy just to give him a ticket, doesn't realize it's an escaped convict. The guy gets out of his car and shoots him in the head. And then he twirls around and he shoots him in the back. And then he falls down unconscious, and the shooter gets in his car and on purpose drives over him, drags him down the street 60 feet. And he pushes off, and of course he loses his skin on the muffler, on his hand. And then, so he walks back to call in his own assist. Man, it's tough. And he, they played it during court, and he sounded bored. He goes, officer down, officer shot. I'm going, oh my god. So I got to him at his bedside. I think it was about three days later, and I did this sketch. And he lays there, he goes, I didn't see anything. I only saw the flash of the gun. But there's tricks, and I talk about it in my book. And I said to him, what kind of expression did he have? And I thought I was going to fail, and there's 4,000 cops wanting to see the cop killer. He just didn't die. And he goes, I never saw, just the flash of the gun, I never saw his face. So I made him laugh, because I'm real funny if you've almost been killed, I'm a hilarious. And then I, and then I go, uh, what, kind of, what kind of expression did this guy have? I'll never forget, he said, he looked like a shark, like he didn't care about anything at all. And in my mind, it's in ICU, I'm going, yay! So that means he saw the face, so I did the sketch. They put it out two days later, two guys at the jail booked him in, for shoplifting a chainsaw from Sears. <laughs> anyway, and they thought he looked like the sketch. And man, the nose is too long. I could fix the mustache, you know, but I didn't, okay? And I hate plaid shirts to this day. But anyway, it, I hate, God, don't wear a plaid shirt if you rob somebody, please. But this guy wear a solid, and a blind girl gets raped. She's pregnant. What a nice guy, right? He, blades a, he blades, rapes a blind pregnant woman. So all they have is a bus driver that saw her get off the bus, and then the rapist followed her off. So <laughs> I did that sketch, and the bus driver was abusive. She goes, I told you I never saw him, only in profile on my peripheral vision. Put that sketch in the trash when I showed it to her. And so I did, and then the detective comes in and says, where's the sketch? And I pulled it out, and he went to the grocery store on the pathway. And the manager goes, oh yeah, he works here. I'm fixing a fire, David Zayas. There's a video if I won't want to watch it. Terrible, pitiful sketch. All right. <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, Michael Avenatti called me, and I got with Stormy Daniels to do. And I, I, the truth is, I wanted to kill the story because I thought it was a tacky story, and I wanted to be the, the artist that didn't do any interviews. And I was curious if she was lying or not, correct? Would that be a good a curiosity that you would have in your, you know, curious? Okay. So, and then my husband got a picture of him, her for his golf buddies, just whatever. So there I am sketching. Ooh. And then there's a sketch, and I will tell you, I'm 99 point, I'm positive. Nobody connected to Trump did this because there's a $131,000 reward, and they would have turned him in already. Got it? For 131000 one of those crappy sketches like the blind girl. So I think there's a 60%. She's got so many layers. She's a Pisces. I think there's a 60% chance she's lying, but I really don't care, right? I mean, do you care or no? You're good. 
All right, this is a pitiful sketch. This is one of the worst I ever did, but it got the guy called in immediately, and I got a letter of commendation. I mean, the chin's four times too long. The pervert's not wearing glasses. I mean, I don't, there's nothing, but it worked. So, look, this woman, she's in England, and she does a sketch. She's an art, a retired art teacher. This guy mugged her, and it got him caught. So, law enforcement, what I'm trying to do is convince law enforcement to take forensic art seriously. And maybe before I die, go to the big drawing board in the sky, I'll do it, but I don't think so. I'm digging a trench with a teaspoon, but they're doing a TV show about me, and if it takes off, I'm dropping law enforcement in the grease. <laughs> <laughs> Art seriously. Am I right? I mean, people don't take me seriously. I'm, I'm goofy. I'm funny. Yeah, because it's good to be that way. But I'm dead serious. How many sketch artists do they have in Chicago? One? Zero. Zero? You think I'd be confused? <laughs> okay. Zero. It's hard. It's good. Well, thank oh, I love him. I won't sketch him. But that's good. Okay, so I had a father and son. They were leaving for work and a a guy comes up just to rob the daddy and shoots him to death in front of the 17-year-old. He was a really good-looking Latino kid, six foot two, just healthy and beautiful and 17. And I was the great person for him to talk to. I've been through something. I'm really great. I've always been that way. My girlfriends, they won't call me for seven years. They're like, I'm getting a divorce, I could tell. So I was good for him to talk to. I did this. The guy turned himself in. It's not that good. I'm not going to visit the guy in prison and go, you know, the eyebrows, I really do. <laughs> I'm not visiting this man. But he turned himself in. I will say he had three little bleach spots on the top of his hair that he dyed because he saw the sketch. No to murderer. Not a good fashion move, this. No, see, no, okay. Not to judge. This girl shot 15 times. I did this. I made her laugh. She almost fell out of the bed. Her mother was mad at me. She wanted her picture taken with me. I mean, I am so funny if you almost thought. And then we did this, and it's terrible. But uh, he was caught driving her car. He was sure she was dead. Shot 15 times. She walked three football field lengths. She goes to a fence. She sees the light. She's trying to get to this apartment complex. She sees a fence. She goes, I can't climb this if I'm not shot. I'm dying here. But with her last energy, she takes a brick and drops it on a brand new BMW. Got help, got saved. And then they were in her car. There were four people. All the other ones were chubby. He was the one that looked like the sketch. But it being, but it being. Oh, my favorite grooming activity by suspects. Tattoo your face. <laughs> yes, please, I love you. I so good that. And we went to trial, he's like, I didn't do it. And, the <laughs> and it's not that good. You know, the skin, the, the face is the, with the tattoo. It's like, oh, the jury, oh, the defense attorney. Oh. No. And then this one, this guy did something to a girl, and it just annoyed me. I want to make sure I don't go over. Okay. It annoyed me, and I told my favorite detective, Keith McMurtry, you don't know him? You know, okay, Keith. Genius IQ, I'm sure. I love this man. And I said, this guy really annoyed what he did to this girl. He knocked her out and just held her head while she was passed out and slammed it against his crotch. I don't know. It just that's that just that's it. She woke up being slammed, I don't know. Near her grandmother's house. So I said, Would you get this guy? And this is the first time I got a selfie from a detective with <laughs> 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 switch the sides of things on one side. I mean, all artists know that if it's a mold here, they're gonna put it up, whatever. It, what, the jury's into this, right? I mean, it makes sense. The witness told me I, she's sorry I came and didn't look anything like it. It's the best one I've ever done. See, that's why law enforcement doesn't use artists. They think, the witness says, I can't do it in the beginning. And then when they finish, they go, I don't know, it's not very good. She said, oh, it's terrible. She cried, I'm sorry, it doesn't look anything like it. That's the best one I ever did. So this is like the most insane torture to be an artist. You have to draw something you can't see. 
Are you kidding me? Oh, this girl was on, I can't remember if she was the one on heroin. This is Acres Home Killing Field. She was either passing out, falling out of the chair, it was a sidewalk princess, or she was the one who was hyper on some other, whatever, the other, very doped up. So there you go, and this is from a drunk guy. Ooh, he was, he was, oh shit, he was DPS. I think he was Texas, right? Anyway, and Miss She Mickey Finn, she dropped something and took his badge and his wallet. Very embarrassed. He goes, I've never saw her face. Anyway, <laughs> that's pretty close. This is a, an, uh, what's her name? Helen Orman, she was killed in West University Place. Very expensive, you know, very expensive neighborhood. And so I had witnesses that just drove by or walked by, or, and it was very iffy on the sketch. And then they put it out, and some woman that lived in the area had a stack of the flyers, hey, wanted for murder, because that was her gas station. She was freaked out and rich. You know, there's rich, and then there's rich and freaked out. So she's walking into Academy, and she sees a guy walk out that looks like the sketch. And she takes his tag number down. Of course, what has she got? A diaper bag with a purple crayon, of course. That's all she has. You know what I'm saying. Orange won't show up. you got the purple. And so she takes down the tag number. So a few days later, Coy Morales, who's a Texas State Trooper, he's taking down tag numbers and running them in the system, seeing what's up for, with people asleep in cars at midnight. And one tag number comes up, one for murder in Houston. And so he gets some friends, they have a little shotgun, like, wake up, sleepyhead. And in the car, they found the, the ammunition bought at the Academy store. The gun used in the murders at 34 cents and maps to Colorado. Now, babies, I mean, you're not all the law enforcement. How is he going to get gas? Because he was also near E. Okay, people. So, uh, and that's from that sketch. And I called the girl, and she's thinking like the whole rest of the world that I'm fighting. I called the girl that got $48,000 reward watch. You know what she said? No, it really didn't look like him. The rest of the sentence is, but something maybe, you know, I'm, I do hope they do that TV show about me. You know, because I want to let them know, hey, Chicago taxpayers, you don't have a forensic artist full time. I mean, they should have somebody. So there, it's not that good. Something good. But I don't change them. And then they go, thank you, lady with the crayon. This is over the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't invite me. HPD didn't invite me to the barbecue. They had a group barbecue thanking everybody that helped. Because <laughs> 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 the detective didn't want me to go because I was a girl and I was a civilian. I have all this faced out, you know. No, no, I don't need. I, I need nothing. No, I, I'm used to it. I've been. Uh, I've been abused by HP. We all have, haven't we? <laughs> they tried to get me. <laughs> no, I, they were going to give me a ticket. I was going to get a ticket. They owed me $11,350. When I freelanced for seven and a half years, they should have given me a job right away. How long did it take them? Seven and a half years. So they owed me $11,350 for work I'd already done. And I got stopped for a ticket. I told the guy, I said, you guys are abusing me. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, 11300 He goes, I don't know you, money. He said, look, I showed him the invoices. I'm going to, to try to get some of the money. And he goes, you know, and I said, so why don't you give me a ticket? Why don't you beat me and pour salt in the wound? You guys only three. And when I explained it, which was hard because I was freaking out, at one point he was giving me a back rub through the window. <laughs> and he goes, I love you, but he does nothing sexual, just like for what you do. Uh, <coughs> just, you know, I've been abused by HEV. Okay, uh, textbook. If you know somebody after I'm dead, I wrote this, I can't stand the rock. It actually got good toward the end, got good at writing, he edited it. I did everything with pictures, 500 pictures or more in here because I want to draw a picture, I don't want to write a damn book. But if you know somebody that can draw, this will give it to them. The only way I can make myself uh, write this is I told myself, if you're on your deathbed, what would you want to tell people? The tricks, like what kind of hair did they have and what was the expression? <coughs> so you get that book online. This is how many artists there are, none. And they have APHIS, you know what that is, CODIS. Now they have facial ID, I live to see it. Now we're putting sketches in, and it's comparing it to photographs. 
and is finding guys. It's so new, he doesn't even know about it, and he's with DPS. They just bought it. They just bought it and haven't used it on my stuff yet. But the girl in Miami, she's had four hits. So the little baby artist that you might know that could get this book, the field's going to explode. Because once these guys figure out, like with the fingerprints and the DNA, they can just sit there and put stuff in the computer and eat donuts and drink coffee and get the thing. <laughs> they're they're going to want everybody's going to want a sketch artist, I hope. I hope. This is them. I was working with these computer guys. They said, oh, your sketch is picked out. You know, the most. They, all of these sketches picked out somebody out of 10,000 people and put them in the first position. And you know, as an investigator, you could ask for the top 10, but these were put in the first. And I, okay, they have me get with the uh, mm, Holocaust survivors, and I did pictures of their relatives that were destroyed during the Holocaust. Also, the pictures were destroyed, people, right? Everything was destroyed. And look at him, he's got this man, was what a turn on him. Walter Case, no, Walter Case, what, there's his tattooed number. And he saw his sister put in the town square and she was eight and shot in the head and all the little kids. The, the grief that I went through with these people, this woman, Helen Collin, look, look up his testimony, Walter Case, and I did portraits of her parents and she held me and I just, Unbelievable. So I always wanted a display in a museum, so I have a display in the Holocaust Museum. Mm -hmm. That grief for that, this man, what a, oh, what a turn on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, all these people became millionaires, and one of them became a billionaire after they went through that. Right? After they went through that. She was starving to death. She was starving to death, and she was 16, and she begged the bricklayer. She said, please kill me. It's so painful. Please, please. You have tools, please. And he could have. That would be like their style. Okay. And he just went. And he came back the next day and he gave her a hard boiled day wrapped in a paper, newspaper, and he could have been killed for that. And he said, read the paper. And so she ate the egg and the paper said that there was going to be liberation, that the Allied forces were close, that they were fixing. So they, were, they did get uh, liberated the next day, but that night they said, we have an extra ration for all the women. There's a women's building. And they ran out before her building, and she was like, oh. And then the next day they got up and they realized they had poison in all the rations. All the other women died, and she was liberated. And God, that I mean, I do grief, but that took me down. Okay, facial reconstructions of skulls. Easy, boring, easy. Everybody goes, oh, it's so mad. No, I don't put sculptor. I don't put the tissue depth I used to. I just look at it, I can see a clean skull, and I can see the face. And I don't know well, who can't, and uh, I teach this, and it's just not hard. Recently, a detective took me to a field because he thought I had mojo going on. I found a little bit of hair, and I picked it up. It was clean because she'd been there two years. And it was just a little hair, and I'm glad I saw it because it was giving me an African American female, American female, and she had like Asian and stuff in her bones. So I did that. I told him she's pretty, and immediately, as soon as he put out, he got a call. And these people were so dingy they didn't realize she was dead. So he's in a room full of 50 people screaming in grief, ah, because he goes, well, yeah, she died anyway. So all they had because she had an alternate lifestyle and some drug use were these two pictures. <clears throat> so that's how close. Like you can, if you pray, you get an image of the hair and you get a vision. You do. I mean, sorry. I pray and then all I had was this piece. Somebody hacked the teeth off. But the top of the mandible was, the mandible was gone. So I prayed and I got a hairstyle like I always do, and I did that. There she is. And then Baby Grace, erotic corpse. Mm -hmm. Gotta be tough. And you can see the beauty, but this is actually easy. It's just all rotted, but you see with the eyes cute eyes, cute nose, cute lips, move on. And I went to dental school. Oh, I forgot. I went to dental school. I'm sitting in dental school in San Antonio going, why the hell am I in dental school? <laughs> and then that was part of the plan because I just quit and I moved to, to Houston and it's helped me with the skulls and everything fell together for me. There was like a bigger hand. 
making stuff happen. I was meant to be almost killed because that's the only way I could stand the resistance from HPD because they were mean. And they were <laughs> because I mean, I was almost killed if you tell me no, if I'm being normal, I'm not gonna. Yeah, he's like, we better be nice. <laughs> no, I couldn't take, they were horrible, but, they, but I went, God, I'm, I'm after real life and death stuff here. I'm not kidding around, they're not gonna stop me. Okay, my husband, I'm newlywed, seven years we've been married. His, he's cousin with Peter Jennings, so if you call him to take my class, he sounds like him on the phone, other than that. And he's a, he's a famous supermodel, 100 years ago. We both were models, but he, he was like the Marlboro man. And he, all it is is he had, it doesn't mean you're nice or smart or probably, probably stupid maybe, but he just has really big bones in his face. <laughs> That's all, and he is hard headed. So there he is, there's his famous, I saw it on a magazine. And I was a dead girl in a Robert Mitchum movie poster, okay? <laughs> Somebody had to model for this job, all right? And I did. <laughs> That's my joke, but I did the other modeling. Then I did a painting of him, because I paint, if I love someone, I paint him. And I danced on the Real Don Steele show, this, so this is me trying out a long time ago. You know how long ago it is? The year after I was on, they invented VCR, so I couldn't record myself. <laughs> I just had to watch it and go, wow, that was some good moves. So modeling, 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 stupid, low IQ deals, don't care, okay. Is they flew me to Romania to teach those guys, and some bureaucrat got them all computers, and I just draw. And they had two computers on each desk, and I showed them we're all drawing, and they go, they had like a committee come up, and they go, we love that you're having us just drawing. Go, What's with the computers? They go, some bureaucrat was sure we had computers. So they are famous in Romania. <coughs> this is how I do it. I face the witness. They can't see it. And I get the catalog pages with the eyes, lips, and noses that they've chosen. Okay, I'm almost done. All right, I've got to be on time. And here's the catalog, the whole. Listen, this is how you can tell a young person how to do this. This is used worldwide. It's Samantha Steinberg's, you'll find it, facial identification catalog. Just get that, get two, one for you, one for the witness, or actually get four or five in case you have two witnesses. They pick out the feature, you draw what they say. Got it? All your people that know, people that draw, they just draw pictures. They're gonna tell you which nose to draw, you just gotta compose it in good composition. Like if the nose ends here, the lips aren't down here, they're up here, got it? I mean, it's, that's it. That's how you do it. Now you know how you do it. If I get vaporized by a meteorite on the way home, <laughs> tell somebody how to do it because they're going to have facial ID and they're going to put it in a system and compare it to photographs and they can solve cases like the fingerprints are and the DNA. Okay, this was last week. This guy uh, shot some girl in the face just because she wouldn't let him herself get robbed. You know, she, she's in a car. But anyway, he killed her, but she didn't die, because she'd shoot somebody in the head. So let me see if I can get this to work. Probably not. Anyway, there's a video of me somewhere <laughs> drawing the drawing. I might, let me see if I can find it real quick. Oh, this is me working a computer, are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, here, let me see. It's only 27 seconds long. Some young girl at the office said, look, your phone will do this for you. And I go, my phone? She sets it up, wow, how did you do that? So that's how I do them. I do them from the top down like a printer. You're not supposed to draw like that. I just go like this. Well, like that. <laughs> I, I, really fast. <laughs> well, yeah, that is my phone. That's my phone. Okay, that's that. Oh, I can't believe it. Hey, here's a, you saw a miracle. I am old and I got that computer to do that. <laughs> yeah, come on, don't laugh. I'm so proud. Okay, here we go. Get this back up there. Where were we? All right, here. Oh, I can't believe I did that. And I have time left. Okay, there's my true crime book. Hoo-ah! Don't write books. There's the mayor of Houston. It's hanging in the public works building. 
and we have to go and pee in a cup sometime, like a drug test, right? So I walk up to the building and it's hanging real high on my security and I go, who is the great artist that did the mayor's portrait <laughs> up there on the, and they go, we don't know what you're talking about. What do you do? You need to go pee in a cup, you're supposed to. Who did do the, I go, I am the artist. And they go, <laughs> but it's a nice painting. So this is something, the neatest thing I'm doing. I'm doing mayor's of San Antonio, and you know who Juan Seguin, they named Seguin, Texas, okay? They have a picture of him when he was 80, and all he did was age regress, because I can age regress and progress. I can take babies and make them look like adults, and they'll be right, and they get them back. And I can do a reverse, and if you look at your boss, he's pissing you off, just think of him as a baby, and then you're not so bad. <laughs> so anyway, this is, here he is at 80, and then I just, Made him 32, 35, like when he was the mayor. Mm -hmm. See? Kept the anatomy. It's actually very easy. So there's my portrait of Juan Seguin. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's hanging there for one of his descendants who kind of looks like him. And then the Clemente Delgado family have do not have a photograph because he was mayor in 1823. But I had all these descendants. Look how good looking. I'm not trying to comp. They're not here. These are some great looking people. So I used the descendants. This is from, wow, 18-something, wow. Good looking, looks like Cano Reeves, right? <laughs> no, it does, okay. So I did Clemente Delgado, and then they had an unveiling in San Antonio, and this guy shows up, and I'd never seen him before, and I went, holy cow, you look like him. You know, so they do, they have this familial thing going on, and all I did was I darkened his eyebrows and compared him. And then the Jose Miguel Arseniegas. I'm almost done, I'm gonna be early. There's their des his descendants. Oh, okay, 20 minutes early. Jose Miguel Arseniegas descendants. Also really great, like this is one of the best looking men in the world right here. <laughs> He's been dead for 80 or 100 years. That's a good look, I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying? This is a good look. Okay. Portrait artists appreciate beauty. I mean, what the hell did Michelangelo do? I mean, Pope Julius IV goes, I want the Sistine Chapel with Bible verses, and all those people are half naked, if not completely naked, on the ceiling, great looking ripped bodies, right? Think about it. He loved people, wow. Okay, so anyway, there's the portrait I did. And I study, I did historical research, and I have an expert tell me what kind of clothing. I'm almost done. And then this girl, you know, every, does he have a crazy, I got a crazy brother, Mark from Mars. Okay, she's got this relative that she had her friend do a computer image. And then my patron found me and had me do this. So she is suing her to take this down. I gotta go to trial and say, yeah, to San Antonio, it's cost me thousands of dollars. They're suing us, she's gonna lose, because it's, if you wanna make 30 portraits, if you wanna make a portrait, if you, you can, it's a free expression, but she goes, no, only my, and it's terrible. And she did three. She did three versions, and they're bad. <laughs> they don't look like humans. And she has people put it up. And she wants to control the Arsenegas, and she has T-shirts and all this. And my patron is losing her house. So there's a comparison. And I'm like, I'm not even going to say, well, why do you have uh, eye makeup on this? Was he cross-dresser? Because the thing is, if you do portraits, it's really hard if the guy's got black eyelashes. I dare everybody in this room, you're painting a portrait. If you're going to show the black eyelashes, it's really a thin edge between making them look like he's got makeup on. So it is hard. I will say it's difficult. But you don't freaking do it unless he was, I don't know. So she's got saving Norma's home, go fund me. And she's losing her house over being, and there's my kitty. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Thank you. Well, Lois, you might enjoy listening to Alexis Frumley, who has a little history with you. I do. Hi, Lois. You probably don't remember me. Um, I'm actually one of your success stories. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. A long time ago. Tell me. Let's save it forever. I didn't know that it was going to bother me until you stood up and started talking. I can see you did. Yeah. Say it. <laughs> the one thing that stood out was his ears. Do you remember that? I kept saying his ears, and you, I was, 
really upset and having a hard time sitting still and you said, go ahead, just walk. So I was pacing and talking to you when you were drawing and you nailed it. And we got him. Thank God. Yay. What year was that? You know, I was trying to remember as I was sitting here, and I think I kind of blocked it out of my head. Yes. But it was... Um, Ballpark it. Yeah, it was... Uh, Ralph Yarborough was... Oh, uh, I love him. Yeah, me too. <coughs> Ralph Yarborough is a great detective. He just... Yeah. I think he just retired. Oh, no, he was stupendous. Yeah. So any quick questions? We have to wrap it up shortly. Oh, yeah, we got to get out of here. <laughs> yes? How long does this take when you sit Hour. An hour? Yeah, and if you're Capricorn, 19 years old, and you don't want me to talk, 25 minutes. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously you have like a really good sense of humor, and you know, you said that you deal with a lot of tough people who just look at a lot of trauma and things like that. So it's really hard to get detail out of. How no, it's not. Of, it's not. So it's not. So how, not for why, me. Why is it hard for you? <laughs> the pictures, mainly the pictures. Mainly, I do it with. I talk to them. They talk to me with pictures. The catalog is it. I give them the catalog and they pick out eyes, lips and noses. They'll say maybe the top part of the nose is like this, and the bottom part is like this other one. It's all pictures. I have people that can't talk at all. So it's just talking with pictures. That's how I did it from a four-year-old. And also I think it helps that I've gone through the steps from being a victim and then finding justice that I can see the bright light at the end of the where they're going to come to justice and it's going to be fun and I don't. Isn't she fabulous? Oh, no. <laughs> Thank God we have that kind of talent in our community making that big a difference. Mm -hmm. And you're young, stop with that old crap. <laughs> <laughs> Next month, we're going to have DPS, we're going to have and you don't even know yet, we're going to have HPD. They may carry guns, but I'm in charge. Um, we're going to have sheriffs and constables. We're going to talk about what's going on in our community. You're going to hear the, the challenges, the successes. You're going to hear where they are. The good news is things are absolutely getting better. And that's the good news. So part of what you want is to come to this, bring friends, because you want to be able to leave here Telling people, be the ambassador of good news. There's nothing good about spreading bad news, is there? So I thank you all very much for being here. Please make sure you signed in or give me your business card so I can, I can spam you. <laughs> uh, thank you. I appreciate you all. Have a great week. You're the new storefront, right? Huh? HPD store for the point area, which is new. No, ma'am, that's shit. <laughs>